All right, so what is up guys? In this video, we're going to write a class or we're gonna create an object that is going to help us convert a date to a timestamp. And then it's gonna get that timestamp and convert it back to a date after making the appropriate calculation. So essentially it's just going to simplify how we calculate the time elapsed for a certain habit. So let's get started immediately by going to our utils folder and creating a new object. So we'll click on new and then go to Kotlin file class. And this time we will click on object and we will just call this one calculations and click enter. So inside here, we can start by creating a function and the first function is going to be called timestamp to string. So we're gonna type in private function timestamp to string. And it's going to take a timestamp of type long and it's going to return a string. Then the first thing we want to type in here is value stamp and that's going to equal a timestamp and you can just import the SQL version and it's going to take our timestamp in there. Then we are going to format this timestamp. So we're going to do value simple date format, which is going to equal a simple date format. And inside here, we are going to insert our format. And depending on where you are, you're more than welcome to change this. But we're just going to follow the European standard. So we're going to type in day followed by month followed by the year. And then we're gonna give it a 24 hour format. So you just have to capitalize the H's for this. And then we're going to add the minutes. So if you wanna give it a 12 hour format, all you have to do is change that to HH, but it's much more simple to keep it in terms of 24 hour format. So I'll leave it like that. And then we need to create the date. So we'll type in value date is going to equal the simple date format. And it's going to format the date, which will be our stamp dot time and we need to import date. So this will just take our timestamp, convert it to a date and then make it presentable. And then of course we need to return this date. So return date and we should cast it to a string. And then we can go ahead and create the actual calculation which will calculate the time between the dates. So we'll type in function calculate time between dates. And all we need to insert in the constructor is a start date or start time, doesn't really matter. And we want to return a string with that. So the first thing we should write in is the end date, which will be the current time that the user makes this calculation. So they will get the most recent calculated time between the dates. So we'll do value end date is going to equal timestamp to string and then we're just going to get the system.currentTime in milliseconds. And immediately under, we are going to create another simple date format. So you can just copy and paste the one that says timestamp to string and insert it there. And we're gonna create a value of date one, which is going to be formatted and it's going to pass the start date. Then we're gonna do exactly the same thing. So you can just copy and paste that, change it to date two, and we're gonna change it to end date. And then under, we want to create a variable that says is negative. And this will check whether the number produced is negative. So let's just set that initially to false. Then we will create another variable called difference, which is gonna be of type long, and it will take date two, and it will be subtracted by date one dot time. Then we need to create a check to check if it's actually negative or positive and react accordingly to what it is. So we are going to write, if difference is less than zero, then we're gonna treat it as a negative number. And then we will make the difference positive. So we'll get a positive number because it's kind of weird to get a negative number produced when you enter a future date. We want the user to know that it will happen in the future, not in terms of negative numbers. And we will set is negative to true. And then right under that, we need to create the actual code that calculates the minutes, the hours, the days, the months, and the years. So to do this, we'll start with the value of minutes, which is just going to equal our difference divided by 60, divided by a thousand, and that will give us the minutes. Then we're gonna go value hours, and that's going to equal the difference divided by 60, divided by a thousand, and divided by 60. And of course, you can go ahead and simplify this as much as you like, but I'm just going to do it the same way I did it initially, because this was the easiest way to explain it. And we'll just continue with the days. So we'll do value days is going to equal this whole difference up here divided by 24. And then we want to get the value of months, which is going to be equal to this expression up here. And to make sure it's accurate, we're just going to divide it by 365 divided by 12. And that will give us an accurate month. And this is just to fix the problem with some months having 28 days, some months having 31 days. This will just get the average and make the calculation very straightforward. And of course, the final value that we should calculate are the years. And that's just going to be the difference 
divided by 60, divided by 1000, by 60 again, by 24. So now we are at days and by 365. And that will give us all the time units we need for this project. And now we can actually create the check. So if it is a negative number, we are going to return a different phrase. So we have to do this manually. And we're going to say if the minutes are less than 240 minutes, then we will return this string that will say starts in minutes. And I forgot to write return when. So we'll just write that at the top and create a block and just move this up there. Then we will do the same thing for the hours. So when hours are less than 48, we will write starts in hours, hours. And because this is really straightforward, I'm just gonna copy and paste what I had earlier. So when it is less than 61 days, we're going to write starts in this amount of days. When it is less than 24 months, it will say starts in this amount of months, else it's going to say starts in this many years. And you may be wondering, why do I have these numbers? And as you can see, everything translates to more than two or two exactly, which means we can save a lot of trouble with changing our strings. So instead of having to write a separate string for saying there's only one hour, we can always be certain that there will be separate hours. With the exception of having one minute, everything will work pretty nicely and we will always have the numbers in plural. And then down here, we're gonna do something very similar. So if the number is not negative, we are going to return these other strings and I'm just gonna copy and paste it in. You're more than welcome to copy this, but I will just explain very briefly what I did here. So very similar to the is negative expression, we're gonna create the same kind of when statement, which will return a string depending on which time unit we are referring to. So if it's less than 240 minutes, it will return the minutes ago. Otherwise it will return hours ago and the same thing for days and for months and years. So this will be the main function of this function. And that is to return a string that makes sense to the user. And yes, we are finally done with this calculate time between dates. And now there's only one more problem we have to address before moving on. And this is to clean the date and time because our time picker will return a single digit number if the number is less than 10, which looks very ugly if you have a date and time because it will just be one and one instead of zero one and zero one. And you'll understand what I mean later. This is absolutely necessary if you want to have a clean user experience. So the first thing we want to do is type in a new function, which is gonna be function clean date. And this will make sure that the date we receive from the date picker will be formatted into a very clean format. So for this, we're gonna create three parameters. The first one is going to be a day of type int, then we're gonna have a month of type int, and finally a year of type int. And we want this to return a string, which will be our clean date. Then we can just type in var day, and that's going to equal our day to string, and var month, which is going to equal our month to string. And we don't have to do this for the year. I mean, you can, but it's really unlikely the user will pick a date that's over 2000 years ago. And I don't even think the date picker allows the user to go more than 100 years ago. So it's completely unnecessary for this example. And then we will write a couple of if statements. So the first one is if underscore day is less than 10. We want to assign the string value of zero and the day to it. And that will make sure that any day that is under 10 will have a zero in front of it, so it looks great. And we're gonna do something very similar for the month. We're gonna type in if month is less than nine, we're gonna add a zero in front of it. So we're gonna type in month equals zero, and we have to interpolate and add the month. And on top of that, we need to add plus one. And you might be wondering, why did we decide to say less than nine this time? And that is only because the calendar function that receives the month for us, for some odd reason, decides to receive the month or to get the month starting with the index at zero. And in my opinion, this is very odd because everything else starts at one, but for some reason, the month likes to start at zero. And that's the same reason we have to add a one to it after we retrieve the month, because January starts at zero and December will be 11. So we want to make sure the month is displayed correctly and we'll add a one to it. Then down here, we need to write the return statement, which is going to take the day, then it's going to take the month and finally, the year, which is just going to be the year inserted in the constructor. And very similar to this function, we need to do the same thing for the time. So we're gonna type in function clean time, and that's going to take an hour of type int and a minute of type int. And it's also going to return a string. Then exactly like we did with the day and the month, we're gonna do for the hour and the minute. So it's just going to take these two parameters and it's gonna turn them into a string and it's going to assign them to a new local variable. Then we need to create a couple of 
if statements. So if the hour is less than 10, then we're going to assign the string value of zero and our hour from the constructor to the hour. And the same thing is going to go for the minutes, which I'm just going to copy and paste in there. And then finally, the last thing to do is to return this as a string. So we're going to return the hour, add a colon, and we are going to return the minutes. And that's all we have to do in our calculations object. So this will help us a lot when we go to our create habits fragment and it will simplify everything for the user. So everything will appear nicely and it will do all the conversions for us. And there's one final thing I want to do in this part of the tutorial, and that is go to our main activity. And we're just gonna set up a few lines of code that will help us with our action bar and the navigation components so we don't have to do this later. So the first thing we want to write in here inside the onCreate method is set up action bar with nav controller. And then we need to find a nav controller, which is going to be our r.id.navhost fragment. And that is the fragment container that's currently holding all of our other fragments in our main activity XML. And now we need to go down below and write on support navigate up, which will return a Boolean. And inside here, we need to create a value of nav controller. And that's going to equal find nav controller. And then we can just copy and paste in this fragment container. And finally, we need to return nav controller dot navigate up or the super on support navigate up. And then we can just clean that and format it by holding down command alt plus L. And that's all we have to do in our main activity for now. But with that being said, that's all I wanted to cover in this tutorial. And in the next tutorial, I believe we'll be adding some items to our list fragments and we will finally get to continue moving forward with the actual application. But as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. See you.